Hi, I'm Nick Simons, a product manager on the Fluid Framework, and I'm excited to announce that Fluid Framework is ready to power your production scenarios this summer. The Fluid Framework open source library will reach version 1.0, and the Azure service that powers Fluid will be out of preview this summer. We'll be talking to teams both inside of Microsoft and outside who are using Fluid for production scenarios right now. We'll also demonstrate how to build a collaborative experience using the Fluid Framework. But first, let's talk a little bit about what Fluid Framework actually is. As it turns out, building software that allows people to collaborate in real time is remarkably challenging. And that challenge is twofold. First, you have to design the parts of the product that people interact with, the user experience. Second, you have to architect and deploy the services that power that experience. But what if building collaborative experiences was, well, not easy exactly, but easier? And what if you didn't have to worry about the service part at all? That is where Fluid Framework comes in. Fluid is designed to handle the complexity that lies beneath real-time collaboration. Teams within Microsoft and around the software industry are using Fluid right now to bring collaborative experiences to their customers. We'll talk to them a little bit later, but first, I want to show you something. My colleague Tyler and I were discussing the best way to explain Fluid. We agreed that it's better to show Fluid in practice rather than try and explain how it works. I wrote a simple app that simulates a child's felt board. Basically, a canvas where you move colored shapes around to make a picture. I used an open source library called Pixie.js that made it easy to create the core app in an afternoon. I didn't even try to make the experience collaborative. Tyler took my app and used Fluid to add real-time collaboration to the experience. I'll let Tyler explain how he did that. Hello, my name is Tyler Butler, and I'm a product manager on the Fluid Framework. In order to get Fluid integrated with our application, we needed to do three high-level things. First, we needed to add a way to connect to the Fluid service and initialize a Fluid distributed data structure in order to store all of our Fluid data. Second, we needed to determine what exactly we wanted to synchronize using Fluid and create some functions in order to do that. Finally, we needed to connect the synchronized Fluid data in the distributed data structure to the application UX so that as users interact with the application, the data is synchronized and actually updates on all of the remote clients. In order to get started with Fluid, we first imported the Fluid Framework libraries. We then needed to decide which Fluid distributed data structure to use to hold our Fluid data. We used a shared map, which is a data structure for key value pair data. We started by looking at the Pixie.js display object class, which contains properties that control the shape, position, color, etc. But it also contains a bunch of other properties that we don't want to synchronize between clients. In addition, in order to synchronize data using Fluid, that data needs to be in a safely JSON serializable form. Classes aren't JSON serializable. So in order to synchronize data using Fluid, we created a plain JavaScript object called Fluid Display Object. And that object contains the properties that we want to synchronize using Fluid. Since it's a plain object, it's safe to ser serialize. Now we have an object with properties that we can synchronize using Fluid. We next created two functions. The first, Pixie to Fluid, takes a Pixie display object and extracts its properties into a Fluid display object. The second function, Fluid to Pixie, does the inverse. It takes a Fluid display object and sets the relevant properties on a Pixie display object. Now we have a Fluid compatible object and a set of functions to work with that object. The next step is to connect the Fluid data to the application. We need to do that in two places. First, we need to update the Fluid data as shapes are moved locally. To do that, we enable each shape to update its own fluid position by providing a function to each shape called set fluid position. Each shape defines its own event handlers for things like dragging shapes. 
So now we call set fluid position in those handlers. Now each shape is updating its own fluid data and fluid is synchronizing all of that data to every client. We've now handled getting the local changes into fluid, but we have not yet handled changes from remote clients. In order to do that, we can listen to an event on our fluid distributed data structure. Whenever a remote shape is changed, the value changed event handler is called. And you can see here in the code that it uses the fluid to pixie function to update existing shapes and creates new pixie shapes if the shape doesn't exist locally yet. In order for us to share the experience on the internet though, we need a fluid server. We didn't need to write any server code, but we do need something for the Fluid framework to synchronize data between the clients. We use the Azure Fluid Relay service, which is currently free to try and exits preview this summer. Setting up an instance of the Azure Fluid Relay is the same as setting up most Azure resources. In only a couple of clicks, we had a working Fluid Relay instance. The Fluid framework includes client APIs that make it easy to use the Fluid Relay. Use the URLs and keys like the ones shown here to connect your app to the service and everything else just works. Thanks, Tyler. I want to emphasize how fundamental Azure Fluid Relay was to the success of this demo. In principle, anyone can stand up a Fluid service, but it represents an enormous investment. And Azure comes with critical properties such as security, reliability, compliance, scalability, and data residency. I want to thank the Azure Fluid Relay team for building an amazing service. Second, I want to talk a little bit about how we handle auth and the token required to connect the client to the Fluid Relay. Our app is anonymous and we use an anonymous token provider. This is not recommended, but most likely your app will include auth and you can use that auth solution to manage your tokens. Last, I want to point out a potential bug in our demo app. Right now, if client one is dragging an object and client two changes the color of that object, then client two's color change will be lost when the drag ends. This is because we store all of the properties in a single fluid object and that object is changed atomically. To fix this bug, we need to break up the fluid data into smaller chunks. For example, one object that includes position data and a different object for secondary qualities like color and transparency. It's important to note that everything we did to build that demo app, you can do too, right now. Follow the links on the screen to learn more. There are several products in market or coming to market soon built with the Fluid Framework. These include both Microsoft products and products from other companies. I reached out to some of our partners to talk about Fluid. So the industries we serve are seeing an increasing trend towards real-time collaboration, and more and more data is appearing in the cloud. It allows multiple participants and even automated systems to react to data in the real time and modify data in real time. For example, one of our key products, AutoCAD, has a capability called Sheet Set Manager. Previously, users had to check out the sheet set, make their changes, and check it back in. But with the use of fluid technology, they're able to now concurrently edit these sheet sets. And this is just one example. We have numerous use cases, such as collaborative design editing, model coordination, and XR-based workflows that can take advantage of concurrent workflows. Fluid Framework is really gonna provide us the backbone for all our future work to connect our customers' data and provide a truly collaborative environment for our customers. Uh, for us, it gives us a means to develop a scalable digital thread that can be used from everything from instantaneous collaboration of a few colleagues on an engineering team to something that's much more locked down and deliberate, like, like managing simulation and engineering data. Fluid is going to allow us to be able to combine automated workflows that can be set up to provide that necessary automation, as well as orchestrated workflows with humans and machines um, at the controls. Whiteboard was built to be collaborative. And so being able to use the Fluid Framework and OneDrive for Business for Data Sync just means that we can focus on our productivity experiences and we get to leverage all of the storage capabilities in a very straightforward way, which is great.
you know, Fluid's distributed data structure was just a really good match for the way our product was already put together. So it made total sense for us to use Fluid. And, you know, as a widely used sort of product with a lot of year over year growth, we absolutely need kind of a framework that's being deeply invested in like Fluid is. So we looked at a number of different technologies, but there was also a recognition that concurrent collaborative editing is a complex orchestration problem. We realized that we would like to join a, an, an ecosystem that allows us to not only learn from the community, but also contribute back. And so when Microsoft rolled out the Fluid initiative, that was a perfect fit for us. We choose Fluid because it's the right technology at the right time to link data across all of our applications. Okay, it's unopinionated, it's simple, but it's extremely powerful. It's really important that to us that Fluid is open source. Uh, it gives us a genuine way to be part of a great emerging technology. Okay, we can benefit from all the work put in by Microsoft and the other contributors. Uh, we can also contribute to the code ourselves. I know my teams are super excited to be part of this. We're excited to see Fluid Framework powering real world scenarios right now, but it's still early days. I've invited Roland from Autodesk and Taylor from the Fluid Framework team to talk about some of our investments that we're making in new distributed data structures to support new scenarios. I know we're working on adding a tree distributed data structure to the Fluid Framework. Can you talk a little bit about why? Today, Fluid is based on the concept of rather simple data structures, like for example, an editable string or a map. But for Autodesk, we have often much more complex data models. We realize that it makes much more sense to have one tree structure, which can have all these elements inside of the data structure. I think the problem that we are trying to solve here with the shared tree effort is bringing together a number of often disparate technologies and putting them together in a package that is adoptable and easy to use. This gives you, for example, transaction safety, where you can do multiple edits inside the data structure as one transaction, the ability to do more complex uh, editing operations, like, for example, moving things around within the tree. And there are also better performance because we no longer have so many small objects to handle. I think it's awesome that Autodesk and Microsoft are working together on this. How did that start? So in, inside of Autodesk, we have already been working on collaboration technology for several years. But at some point, we realized that this is really something we should do together with stronger parties instead of just developing our own solution. Microsoft just had open source the Fluid Framework. We realized that their and our goals are actually very, very similar. And so we decided to join this project and contribute large parts of what we had been working internally. Yeah, just like uh, the shared tree itself is a, a conglomeration of a bunch of different uh, really cool features uh, in a neat, neat package. I think the, the team building it is also a conglomeration of a bunch of different experts. We have people uh, you know, from four different teams uh, who have all independently worked on uh, IP in this space, and we're bringing them all together to build something really, really cool. I want to thank Shelly Mushtaba and Roland Riches Christou from Autodesk, Bruce Engelman from Hexagon, Faith Allington from the Whiteboard team, and Taylor Williams and Tyler Butler from the Fluid Framework team for talking to us today. If you're interested in anything you've seen, please follow the links on the screen. And thank you.